What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be talking about five tips for wide receivers to become a better route runner, be covering press releases all the way to moves at the top of the route, how you guys can sell double moves, and how you guys can obviously just create more separation, okay? So I hope this video helps you guys out. Let's get started. All right guys, so the first thing that wide receivers must do to become a better route runner is you have to be able to sell fade on everything you do, but what does that actually mean? How do you actually sell fade? So, so many wide receivers think that they're selling fade simply by just running fast, right? But that applies to everything all the way up to that break point where you drop your hips you put your foot in the ground, make a speed cut, whatever it is. So when you sell vertical, it's got to be your eyes are straight forward, your hips and your shoulders are committed, you're in a good pad level, and you are, yes, you're running fast, but you're also in full stride. So let's say, for example, I'm running a dig route, right? Like, let's say I got to run a dig, and I'm snapping my hips down, I'm breaking this thing down on a dig. What a lot of receivers will do is they'll run up, they'll come off the line fast, and right before that dig break, they'll start to raise up, then they drop down. That raising up, you're no longer selling fade. That's an indicator on your route. You have to make sure that your pad level stays completely vertical, and and then we drop my hips to get in and out of this break. So that's number one. Number two, what a lot of guys will do is they'll run up and they start to turn their shoulders and turn their hips before they drop down. That's another indicator. If I'm a DB, let's say you're out of the slot and let's say I got a too high safety look which eventually turns into off man coverage. He's watching your hips and your pad level. So if he sees that start to turn, what do you think he's gonna do? He's breaking on the route. So make sure, fellas, we have speed, we don't slow down, we don't raise up. We gotta make sure number one thing to become a better route runner is you have to sell vertical on everything that you do. All right guys, before we get into the second tip on how to become a better route runner. I want to talk to you about an opportunity that we have this offseason. We are traveling to nine different cities across the United States for two day long quarterback and wide receiver training camps. So if you guys want to come out to one of our camps, we are traveling to Tampa, Florida, Houston, Texas, Phoenix, Arizona, Newark, New Jersey. Then we're going to be coming to Atlanta, Georgia. Then we're going to be going to Chicago, Illinois, Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, and Los Angeles, California. So if you guys want to come out to any one of those camps, we would love to have you. I wouldn't even consider it a camp really. It's more like a clinic because spots are going to be limited. We're only having about 10 to 12 guys per position group, per age group, so we're keeping it small. You get a chance to work with myself, work with my staff that are to have all Division One college, NFL experience. We'd love to have you guys out there. Check out that very first link in the description below if you want to make it out to one of our camps. Spots are going to fill up fast because we just started promoting this, so I really, really appreciate you guys coming out. Let's get back to this video. All right, guys, so the second tip to becoming a better route runner is you have to make sure that you drop to a low explosive position at the top of your breaks, like a comeback, a curl, a dig, a stop route, a hitch route, anything where you have to drop your hips. You got to make sure that you get to a low explosive position. So let's use a comeback, for example. Let's say it's zone coverage and I got a DB who's maybe like seven yards off. I'm running. I'm selling vertical like I should be. And then I drop into the break. But when I drop, I don't get low enough. Maybe what I do is I bend at the waist instead of dropping at the waist. So I come up to the top of this break and I go here. And then I, because I'm tall and I'm running full speed, I drift. And when we drift up on my route, where are you drifting to? You're drifting to the DB. You don't want to run into the DB. You want to run away from the DB. So how you make that tight change of direction is actually dropping your hips into a break. So let's say I'm coming up into a break. I want to make sure that I'm getting low. I'm dropping my butt down, but I'm not having my chest straight up. I'm not like this and I'm going to squat. My chin is going to my knee. I'm dropping my butt down to get to that low explosive position to turn a corner tight as if I'm running a comeback, a curl, a dig, whatever it is. So make sure a second tip to become a better route runner is you got to make sure that you're dropping into this low explosive position. Chin goes to my knee so I can explode out of this break as fast as possible. All right, guys, so the third tip to becoming a better route runner is when you guys have to make a speed cut or a heavy indicator cut at the top of the break, you have to make sure that you are being violent with your feet, okay? So what does that exactly mean? So let's say I got to run a post, for example. So many guys, they'll sell vertical up into a route, but to be able to change direction, it's a lot like your hip drop. It's got to be quick. When you're making this cut in the ground, this single cut, you can't be just running up and then just be soft with the cut because what's going to end up happening is you're not going to have the explosion out of the break, and we'll get to that later in this video, but also you're going to drift on the route. And you and I both know when we drift, we're drifting into a DB. So we want to make sure that we make that tight change of direction. So when I come up, I want to make sure that my feet are sudden. I'm trying to explode into that grass. Now, when you guys do this to get the most explosion out of there possible, we can't be on my toes and I can't be on my heels. You have to be on that arch of your foot. So when I strike the ground right here, like I'm running a post, I'm not on my toes because I'll fall forward. I'm not on my heels because I'll shoot back. I'm on that middle arch of my foot. That middle arch is what will push you and explode you out of this route to get you to that ball. So make sure third tip to become a better route runner, make sure we are striking the ground on that arch of my foot. 
All right, guys, so the fourth tip to becoming a better route runner as a wide receiver is you gotta make sure that we are accelerating out of the break. So how do we exactly do that? So let's use that example of like a comeback again, right? So like, let's say I'm running a comeback route and let's say I drop into a comeback route. So when I drop into this comeback route, I can't just drop and then just pop up and expect the ball right away. What I have to do is I make sure I accelerate out of the break. So you gotta think of this thing is like the ball is being thrown to a spot and it is a race to that spot. Who is going to get there faster? You or the DB? And when it uh, ties into everything that we talked about, you gotta make sure that you self fade to get the DB running fast. You can drop your hips low to make that tight change of direction. So the DB has to take a wider change of direction than we do. And if we accelerate back to the ball, we will run the route every single time. It's not about what the DB does right. It's about what the wide receiver ends up doing wrong. So when I go up to make this break and I drop down, I gotta make sure my mindset is like, I'm taking like, if I'm running back this way, balls over there running a comeback. I wanna take my right elbow and rip it like I'm elbowing somebody behind me so I could drive and accelerate back to that ball. So fourth thing to become a better route runner, make sure that you are ripping your arms out of a break to accelerate to get back to that ball. All right guys, so the last tip to becoming a better route runner as a wide receiver is you have to make sure that you have a high football IQ, okay? So now, what does that exactly mean? You have to understand the leverage of a DB, why he's playing a certain way and what he is trying to accomplish, right? So if I gotta got run a route, like let's say I gotta run, like uh, let's say I gotta run a post route, right? Let's say I gotta run a post route and I have an in inside shade, pressed up DB. What am I gonna do? He's inside shade, he's pressed. I gotta run an inside breaking route. What do I do? I don't wanna force the inside release because that DB's lined up inside shade for a reason. He's inside shade because his goal is to force me outside. The sideline is his help. Anytime you see an inside shade DB, that's what it is. The sideline is his help. So if I have an inside shade DB like so, my goal is, okay, I'm gonna maybe try to threaten him to his leverage, try to attack where he doesn't want me to go. Then let's take the outside release and let's try to restack or if he's hip to hip, I'm gonna throw by. But we gotta make sure that we always always have a plan as a wide receiver. I can't go up there and just, oh man, he's, he's, out, he's inside shape, what do I do? And then you just try to run around him and get completely rerouted. You gotta have a plan for that specific leverage. Just like if you had to run a post route and you had an outside shade DB, like maybe it's cover two or whatever it is, I'd give him a move and I'd get back up to the top of the route and I'd give him a little lean, I'd restack, whatever it may be. But you have to make sure that we understand why a DB's playing a certain leverage and what he's trying to do. If he's outside shade, his goal is to force you inside. He's inside shade, his goal is to force you outside. That's the mindset that we have to have. Do not force any release off the line of scrimmage make sure that you have a plan walking up there all right guys i really want to thank you for watching i really appreciate it. if you guys have any questions at all please don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below we'll get back to you as soon as i possibly can always appreciate the feedback and obviously it's always great to hear back from you guys i always always appreciate it and again fellas if you want to come out to one of our nine off-season training camps check out that very first link in the description below it's a two-day long camp eight hours of training total we'll be doing one-on-ones seven on seven positional skill work individual work because like i said we are keeping the numbers small. You will be coached on every single rep. Check out that very first link below if you want to come out and get some great work in with us. I'll see you guys next time.